Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with Tomas Angel. Tomas, how are we doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me, Gabriel. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited because this is a local brand here in the Portland area, a uh, non-alcoholic beverage, Atatut beverage. We'll talk about that momentarily. But first, let's get a little background. Who is Tomas? Give us, who, who are you? Who are we talking to today? Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, where do I begin? Um, so, yeah, um, grew up in in the Portland area. Uh, originally uh, born in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, my mom is uh, is from out there, and my dad is from uh, uh, from Cucuta in Colombia. Uh, and so, I was the the first uh, of my siblings to be born in the U.S. My older brother and older sister were born in Bogota. And uh, the year I was born, uh, they moved back to the U.S. Um, but I really great, uh, grew up and raised in the Pacific Northwest. Um, made my way to, to university in Seattle, uh, where I studied uh, international business and economics uh, with a minor in uh, actually in Mandarin and Chinese language. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And then embarked on a, a path in aviation, which was kind of my first love. Uh, worked for Boeing for almost 10 years um spending a lot of that time in china um uh, because of the, the chinese language skills um but yeah uh, back here in oregon now uh for the last almost three years now since the since the pandemic uh we're actually we're actually based down in bend oregon even though we spent about half our time in portland that's where my brother and some of my family are still um yeah we're we're just uh over the mountains in the the high desert uh, which uh just a little bit more sun and a little less rain just a little bit more sun, almost like 300 and some odd days. <laughs> in fact, like Mandarin, uh, just for folks to know, Mandarin's like actually the most common language. One of those common languages in the entire world is actually one of the most used languages. In fact, it's one of the most used languages at our hospital as well. Uh, that's how I first heard about it. Now, now let's talk about altitude beverage. One, what is it and how did you start it? Yeah, absolutely. So definitely a pandemic baby. Um, as you can kind of tell from, from my background, uh, I didn't mention anything about beverage or for that matter, even entrepreneurship. Um, but yeah, it, it was, yeah, just a kind of a happy accident or whatever you want to call it. I, I always kind of call it the silver lining, uh, from, from 2020. Um, so my, my wife and actually partner in altitude, uh, Laura Margarejo Silva, uh, we were based in Beijing. Um, January 2020 rolled around, this little virus popped up in Wuhan, and it kind of, you know, threw our lives upside down. Um, we ended up getting stuck in, in Bogota for three months, um, and eventually got back to the U.S. in summer of 2020, um, and kind of faced a reality where we knew we weren't going to be able to go back to, to China. Um, there was just no way back. It was 2020. Everything was kind of frozen. So we had this uh, forced repatriation, and kind of this moment where... You know, we had thought our lives were going to be kind of going in one direction. And then all of a sudden we were kind of presented with this sort of plot twist, uh, perhaps. And um, yeah, it, we kind of looked upon ourselves and said, hey, how do we turn this uh, this uh, lemons into a lemonade? <laughs> and um, at the time, it, we came back to the U.S. and had this uh, reverse culture shock where a lot of our close friends and family were taking things like chaga and hemp CBD and rhodiola and um, had this moment where we kind of had to say to ourselves, you know, is everybody taking drugs? You know, <laughs> so that's okay. But, you know, um, uh, why, you know, why are people taking these things? And, you know, uh, what's the benefit and how do you take it? And you know, these are close friends and family of ours. Um, so we kind of hit this point where it was like, all right, well, we want to have the benefits like anti-inflammatory benefits, cognition benefits, immunity benefits, all these things that, you know, these functional ingredients have, but how do we take it? And so for us, that was really the, the journey that started uh, altitude was just being consumers, right? Um, the sort of the classic entrepreneurship uh, origin story of we had a, a problem of finding products that incorporated these things in a way that one was delicious two was accessible and really three, uh, which is the most important, uh, was routine based, right? Uh, what are the things that fit into our existing routine? 
So being uh, being good Colombians, uh, we looked at the thing that we have without fail every day, which is which is coffee. Uh, and we started to incorporate all these functional ingredients into to our morning coffee. And it, it tasted terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so we kind of embarked on the journey of, of making it taste good. And within uh, a few weeks, we we kind of landed on this uh, at home blend that, you know, tasted really, really good. And it was something that we look forward to every morning. And at the same time, we started kind of thinking, well, you know, hey, we always kind of wanted to get into entrepreneurship. Um, this is a pretty tasty product. We know, you know, we have friends and family in our circle that are interested in these kinds of things. Should we, should we start a company? Um, and so, so we decided in fall 2020 to, to move to Bend, Oregon, which was kind of in our eyes, this beverage incubator, this little ecosystem of uh, certainly beverage, but consumer packaged goods in general, and set out the journey of making making it a reality. Wow. So why why beverages? You know, you kind of mentioned, is it just really you kind of found the niche of a need that you wanted to fill? Yeah, I think for us, it was looking at our not only our own routine, but, you know, people around us, right? Kind of everyday people. Yep. Um, and I think, you know, one of the things that we ran into through just our experiences being consumers for these types of products at the time in summer 2020, a lot of the options were either powders or tinctures, things that, you know, perfectly fine products, but it's kind of like vitamins, right? Like we're, you know, I would say pretty healthy people. We like to work out. We like to, you know, watch what we eat, even try to incorporate some, you know, vitamins and supplements into our routine, but we forget to take those all the time. <laughs> and there's one thing that we never forget to take and that's coffee. Like it was just one of those things where it was like, you know, it, there's never a day that goes by that I hear somebody say, oh, don't talk to me. I haven't had my kombucha yet today. It was, you know, it's, it was one of those things where it was like, it's my so, vitamins. Yeah. 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 And so, um, for us, like I said, it was just really, okay. Instead of trying to recreate our routine, how do we just modify our existing routine? Um, and beverage, you know, I think also it's just one of those things where it's an easy medium, right? It's an easy medium for people to understand, um, you know, that sort of, uh, concept of meeting customers where they're at, um, you know, it's easier, uh, I think with beverage than, you know, even sometimes some, some food items. Um, and certainly when it comes to, to supplements, when it's a powders or a pill or a tincture or whatever that may be. Um, but yeah, it, a huge learning curve getting to beverage. I mean, I think anybody that's, uh, ever dabbled in, in food and Bev and specifically beverage, um, it's notoriously a, a hard space uh, because of just, you know, everything from formulation to, you know, production to distribution to, you know, uh, merchandising, retail. I mean, it, the whole process, it's, it seems simple, right? You're like, it's, it's a canned beverage, right? How hard can it be? Uh, it, it, it's pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, so, no, it sounds pretty difficult. You know, product development is such a, such a difficult thing. In fact, you kind of mentioned, you know, as you kind of came on that you didn't talk about entrepreneurship. You didn't talk about those things. Is this your first business? It is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's our first, you know, real, I would say full on, you know, venture and entrepreneurship. I mean, I was always the kid that had the lemonade stand growing up. And even in, in undergrad at Seattle University, I did the business plan competition there two years. I did the UW business plan competition, the UW environmental innovation impact challenge. I mean, I was always very kind of interested in it, but yeah, I think like a lot of people, right. I, I don't come from a trust fund or from, you know, a position where nothing wrong with it, but we're, you know, especially after graduating college that I kind of had the security to just sort of you know, delve full into, into entrepreneurship, nor did I necessarily have the idea that I felt confident to at the time. Um, and you know, it, I'm very, very grateful for my experience, you know, in the corporate world, I learned a ton, got a lot of amazing experiences, um, uh, but also, you know, it afforded us the ability to, to save money, to be able to actually invest into something once we, you know, kind of had that inspiration, uh, which, you know, uh, for us ended up being, ended up being beverage. 
Yeah. You know, one of the things you mentioned, you know, being in the corporate world previously and then kind of coming into the entrepreneurship realm, what would you say you kind of learned in the corporate world that has helped you in this entrepreneurship endeavor? Uh, oof, a lot. I mean, I think it's, it can always be breaking down into like uh, the lessons that you take away in terms of things that you want to apply versus the things that you don't want to recreate. <laughs> <laughs> Fair yeah. <enough. laughs> No, I mean, I think, you know, very fortunate from, from my career in Boeing, um, I think communication, right? Like uh, good companies, whether you're a large, you know, Fortune 50 or you're a small, you know, family operation. I mean, communication is so huge uh, within, you know, within your team, uh, to your suppliers, uh, to your partners, to your consumers. I think that was one lesson that, you know, um, having that opportunity to, you know, especially not just be with a really large company, but get the opportunity to go um, to different uh, business divisions, to even different countries within, you know, a really large corporate, um, you know, when things were going well was when, you know, people were communicating clearly, effectively, um, you know, across the spectrum of what's your vision, what's your mission to what's your, you know, key performance indicators, you know, what does success look like, you know, uh, to, you know, culturally, like what, you know, what do you, um, what do you believe in, what do you support, um, and, you know, what do you, uh, reward versus disincentivize, you know, based off of, and if you communicate those things, things usually go pretty well, um, to, you know, I think on the side of, you know, some things that are, takeaways from the corporate world that try to not emulate, I think is over-engineering and over-structure things, right? It's trying to be, you know, a little bit more nimble, trying to be a little bit more responsive, a little bit more lean. And certainly being a smaller business affords you a lot of times the opportunity to do that, but it's easy to fall into those traps, right? Um, to over, over process things and feel kind of stuck based off of what, you sort of believe things to be. And I think even through our journey with altitude, um, we, we started with the lattes, right? We started with these, you know, sort of functional, um, oat milk, uh, ready to drink lattes. Um, we launched last year, a new line of alcohol alternative drinks, right? So kind of more the evening routine focus and that has now taken over the lattes. And so even for us, it was one of those moments where it was like, we had to sort of hit this reality of, you know, uh, maybe we need to discontinue the lattes, right? Maybe we need to, mm, you know, yeah. shift. And it's hard, right? Because like you think, oh, you're a small business, you can kind of make, you know, decisions really yeah. sort of quickly yeah. and nimbly, but it's really easy to fall into the trap of, well, you know, I've got a supply chain set up for that. I've got, you know, retailers, I've got, you know, customers that are expecting these things. But um, yeah, I think that was kind of our first major sort of moment where, taking a lesson from the corporate world of, yeah, if you have the ability to, to pivot, if you have the ability to kind of make more sort of quicker decisions on things. Um, it's hard. Um, but uh, for us at least, and you know, time will tell, but you know, we feel it's the, uh, the better sort of direction for our company going forward, um, uh, based off of the data and our consumers and, you know, yeah. um, the model that we're, we're trying to go after. Hey, you're, you're it sounds like you're doing it right. One, you fall, you, targeted a, a a need, right? Found an issue that needed to be resolved. You resolved it. Now you're following the consumers and what they want, right? Exactly. Now, what would you say has, because you mentioned some difficulties, what would you say has been the hardest part about this uh, transition or this hardest part about scaling this beverage company? Yeah, I think um, there's a million different things. That's a challenge, right? Like if you talk, well, I mean, any entrepreneur, right? I mean, nobody, yep. you know, has it super easy, but especially in the world of, of consumer packaged goods, you know, building brands in that type of space, um, you know, inevitably it's always a you know, challenge of scale, right? You're always trying to you know, get your production costs down so that you can offer like the right margin so that, you know, basically um, you can go and fuel growth in a way that, isn't just burning cash. And I think that was one of the first major sort of lessons for us. And part of it was the product that we started with, but it's really easy to fall into the trap of grow, grow, grow. Um, and so like with the lattes within 12 months of being on market, we were in 14 States and nearly 700 doors. Oh, wow. 
uh, which was, you know, on one side of the coin was amazing, right? It was like, wow, look what we did. Like we went out there and, you know, no, you know, uh, beverage experience, no CPG experience, you know, look what we were able to accomplish. And I think a lot of that was a testament, you know, to our brand, to our team, um, you know, even to our product. But the reality was uh, we were an inch deep and a mile wide. <laughs> and we started to hit the trap that a lot of, you know, I would say consumer packaged good companies hit is, okay, we're in 14 states, we're in 600 doors, but I don't have anybody in Virginia. I don't have anybody in Florida. I don't have anybody in Texas. And so we didn't see the same velocities, right? The amount of product that was coming off a shelf in the stores in those places as we did in Oregon or Washington or California, where we had people. And, you know, uh, on the flip side with the, the alcohol alternative line, when we launched that, we were just like, we're just going to be really focused. We're just going to stick to the Northwest. We're going to stick to, you know, kind of what's within arm reach of us. And it got to the point where, you know, within the last six months, we're selling more of those in two states than we are the lattes in 14 states. Wow. Um, and so I think it's those lessons learned where, you know, part of it, I think, is being a new a newbie entrepreneur. Yeah, you know, especially a newbie entrepreneur in a space that you you know haven't had the experience. You know, people will tell you things, and you're uh, part of it. You have to go on the journey yourself. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yep. Um, but second, you know, I think for us was with the fact that we have the hemp drive CBD in our products, we didn't think that we had a a mile deep to go, right? So we kind of you know sought maybe opportunities a little earlier than we should have. Um, and, you know, I think we needed that. I think we needed that, you know, that learning to to kind of go that sort of stretched um, because it enabled us to realize that, yeah, you really do. You have to focus on what's in front of you, focus on the customers that you can reach, focus on, you know, margins that you can sustain, uh, focus on, you know, retailers and distributors that you can talk to on a daily basis um, and sort of, you know, develop a model that you can then scale. Um, so... So yeah, uh, I mean, I have to be kind to ourselves that, you know, it's not even been three years since we embarked on this journey, even though it feels sometimes like 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, I think it kind of goes back to that being, you know, being nimble, being fast, um, you know, learning, you know, hopefully uh, as a uh, cost effectively as possible, you know, without betting the farm on you know, any one thing and, um, you know being able to, to come out through the other side, you know, uh, to be able to apply those lessons. So, yeah, I think that's kind of for us for right now is uh, refocusing, you know, regionalizing, you know, taking what we're hearing from consumers, leaning into it as opposed to the classic, you know, hey, you know, we had this really amazing solution for something that's not necessarily a problem. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I call that the, the shotgun approach uh, sometimes when we basically – you know, shoot out a bunch of little pebbles and then we go visit each pebble to see which one made the biggest impact, right? Sometimes it's a little, sometimes it's a little difficult, but it's a great learning opportunity, right? But like you said, in fact, what would you say has probably been one of the easiest things about entrepreneurship? Ooh, I don't know if anything's easy about entrepreneurship. <laughs> um, no, I, I think the, the most important thing that should, you know, come easy, some days it doesn't, it's the passion, right? Like, I think, if you have a deeper connection to what you're doing, um, even when there's just really, really hard days when you feel like, yeah, gosh, like, why did I give up that really, you know, comfortable corporate job, you know, with the stability and all those things. It's that sort of fulfillment piece of it, of knowing not just, you know, doing something for yourself and, you know, kind of developing something or creating something out of, out of nothing, but like what everybody always says, you know, what's that why? Um, and I think, for us, it's even more solidified now with our our line of alcohol alternatives, because that was one thing, you know, it was a motivation for us to start this company as well. We, as in Laura and I, we reevaluated re our relationship with alcohol through the pandemic. You know, we had an amazing experience living in China. And um, one element of that was, you know, very social going out and, you know, uh, alcohol was a big part of that social life. Right. That coupled with the fact of working with the Chinese government where, you know, most of the dinners and things you went to involved drinking a lot of baijiu, which if anybody knows what that is, it's 
like 60% ABV. It's like lighter fluid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And don't get us wrong. I mean, like, you know, uh, we still enjoy a good glass of wine or, a, you know, a good cocktail now and then again, but it was that sort of seeking of something that enabled us, you know, to have that social occasion, to have that evening on wine, to have that almost reward um, that didn't necessarily have alcohol, right? And in our case, you know, even further taking it, you know, a step further of utilizing these functional ingredients like hemp CBD or nootropics to kind of give you that unwind, to give you that decompress. And so for, for me, it's like, that why, you know, when we get up in the morning or when we go to bed at night and you're tired or you're stressed or you're thinking of those things, it's like, hey, like we're we're doing stuff that is impactful to us. It's impactful to other people's lives. I mean, we've been really fortunate that, I mean, we've we've literally catered a few weddings now with our beverages for people oh, wow. who, you know, don't drink or, you know, want options for people at their weddings to, you know, not be alcohol, but still be, you know, adult and fun and like, that that's easy. That's the easy part of entrepreneurship is when you can, you know, hit on that, that why with, you know, your how and your what, and, you know, sort of a, a synchronous way that, you know, you're making impact. And yeah, of course, you know, I'm not, you know, sort of uh, the same impact as, you know, Boeing, you know, connecting the world and, you know, making incredible, you know, products that, you know, literally go to space and whatnot. But, I'll take change in somebody's day, right? You know, in a way that you know gives them a, a sense of you know, meaning and, and value. You know, based off of you know, uh, yeah. That that for me is that that that's easy. Yeah. Have you ever had a moment of self doubt? Um, at least twenty times a day. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, of course. I mean, I, I think uh, entrepreneurship is is classically like a, a roller coaster. Um, you, know, you, you have these moments where you feel like a genius of, oh, you know, I'm so glad I did this and just everything's going right. And then the next moment it's like, oh, you know, why did I do this? You know, why did I sort of bet the farm on these things? You know, because it's responsibility, um, you know, and not just to yourself, but to, um, you know, your family, to the people that you bring on, especially if, you know, you start you know, bringing on investors um, you know, even your retail partners, your distributor partners, your suppliers, um, you know, even to your consumer, right? And so there is a certain amount of, you know, re, a certain amount, a ton of responsibility that comes along with that. And so there's definitely times where, you know, you feel like, hey, you're not doing as well as you can. Um, and you're maybe not, you know, being the the best uh, to, you know, one of those parties and, you know, self-doubt will, will come in. But I think, for me, at least having a really strong, you know, um, family structure, having a really strong, you know, friend group, having strong relationships with your suppliers, distributors, retailers, consumers, um, when you have all those things kind of, a, you know, it, it, it helps to, to alleviate some of that self-doubt because, you know, it, it's, it's inevitable, but it's, you know, it, somebody put it uh, on, on LinkedIn the other day where it was like, entrepreneurship is, you know, it's like chewing glass, you know, there's just, there's just a lot of pain involved. Um, and it's inevitable, right? Like it's inevitable that you have to go through that, whether you're running a multi-billion dollar company or, you know, a small mom and pop operation, the real testament is, do you have the grit, right? Do you have that, you know, res resilience to, to power through that self-doubt, power through those, those challenges and, um, you know, some people can do it on their own and God, God bless them and more power to them. But I think for the majority, including myself, uh, it, it takes a village. And it takes a lot of support and structure around that. Definitely. Now, what, what about the next five, 10 years? Where is altitude going to scale to? How do you, how do you continue to grow? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited for that. Uh, I think that's where, you know, through kind of some of our repositioning and in, in our uh, refocusing over the last few months, it really gets me fired up because I think by really focusing on this alcohol alternative category, I think where we see altitude in, in five to 10 years is um, very similar to, I'm not sure if you're familiar with a non-alcoholic beer brand called Athletic Brewing. Oh, yep. Yep. Yeah. So I think we we okay. want to see ourselves like Athletic for, yeah. for NA cocktails, right? We as a Northwest brand, even as ourselves, as our own consumers, we are making the conscious decision to, you know, 
drink less, be, not because alcohol is evil or, you know, it, right. we're personally ourselves in recovery, but because we want to be able to get out and do more things, right? We want to go enjoy life and, you know, alcohol certainly has its place in time and, you know, can be a, a perfectly fine thing to enjoy, but it can also be an impediment. Um, and we want to, you know, we want to go hike. We want to go, you know, paddleboard. We want to go, uh, you know, push ourselves uh, to to enjoy, you know, this beautiful Pacific Northwest or just life in general. And I think, you know, for for altitude, if we are, you know, to succeed the way that we want to, we we want to be sort of in the same thought pattern you know, as people are making these decisions in their daily life of. You know, even like, hey, like I want to wake up and take my kids to the park on a Sunday morning and I want to do that without feeling, you know, that that second IPA or, you know, that second yeah. glass of wine yeah. and have an option that still gives those people that that unwind that gives that, those people that social connection uh, that most people seek from alcohol. Um, if we can do that, then, you know, that'll be success. And you know, in order to scale that, I think for us, it's it's developing relationships with our consumers, right? It's, you know, really sort of solidifying that, that routine, um, that as we kind of put it like that, that reward, right? When most people are reaching for a glass of wine or beer or a cocktail, they're not necessarily looking to be inebriated or intoxicated. They're just like, Hey, I had a hard day at work or, Hey, I even like finished this like really long hike. And I want something that, you know, sort of, gives you that feeling of, you know, hey, I accomplished something. And if I can, you know, if we can develop a beverage that gives people that sense of reward, just like how Athletic has done for any beer, but just, you know, in our case with non-alcoholic cocktails, you know, I, I think we'll be onto something. I like it. No, you've, you're, you're new, you're growing. What advice would you have for other aspiring entrepreneurs? Ooh, my number one advice is start small. Start small, um, nimble, quick, cheap. Um, I've had a few people that I've talked to in the last just couple months who've you know thrown out you know different uh, food and beverage ideas. And my number one thing is uh, find a farmers market, you know, um, find a, a place where you can you know pretty cheaply get out there. You know, find a commercial kitchen, find a, you know, find everything to be able to get your product to market and start selling, right? Cause it's, it's really easy to, to theorize, you know, whatever that, you know, idea may be, right. It's kind of the similar with the tech thing, right. You know, it's like MVP, just, you know, minimum viable product, get it out to market and try to validate, you know, the assumptions you have. I mean, I think um, we certainly went that path with the, with the lattes, perfectly great product, delicious. There's a consumer base for it, but it was not the scale or the size that we wanted. Um, and had I, you know, been able to go back and do things over again, I think I would have tried to have been even more nimble and trying to get that to market. Um, Cause yeah, if for a couple grand, you could get a product to market, right. And get people to actually take money out of their wallets <laughs> and buy it because people yep. take free stuff all the time. And your family members yeah. will tell you, you know, oh, you got a great product and everything like that, but there's nothing like going to somebody who you have no idea who they are and, you know, tell them, you know, what you're, what you're basically pitch them on what your product, have them try it and see if they'll take money out of their wallet and buy it and buy it again, and buy it in volume. And if you can start doing that, start scaling it, you know? Um, yeah. And don't, don't let the uh, great be the enemy of the good kind of a situation, right? Just start something. I like it. I like it. I think you also pointed out the importance of the elevator speech, right? Having it ready, kind of ready to go for the consumers. Now, you mentioned you're at Farmer's Market, but where can the folks that might be listening right now find you? Either website, social, where can they find Altitude Beverage in stores? Yeah, so we do sell online to, to all 50 states uh, through our website, uh, altitudebev.com. Um, and for people in the Pacific Northwest, uh, we're at Market of Choice, uh, we're at Elephant's Delis uh, throughout Portland. Um, you know, we're in 
places like Loyal Legion, you know, some of the, you know, kind of up and coming, you know, tap rooms. Um, so for those who are wanting to go out and, you know, kind of have that happy hour, or have that evening experience, but, you know, something that's not alcoholic, but also adult. Um, and yeah, we've got some pretty cool new uh, retailers that we're going to be bringing on uh, over the next couple months here uh, within the Portland and Seattle markets. Uh, and then, yeah, we we do the Beaverton Farmers Markets. We do uh, some of the ones up in Seattle, like Fremont, South Lake Union. We're at Northwest Crossing here in Bend. Um, yeah, and if there's a place that you would like to see us and we're not, if you go to our website on our store locator page, we have a form um, that you are able to, you know, put whatever the Safeway and, you know, Northeast Portland or the, you know, local mom and pop restaurant uh, out in Sandy or whatever it may be. Uh, you can put that in there and then it just helps us uh, when we go to those places say, hey, we've got, you know, customers asking for our product there. Oh, I love it. I love it. That's a great call. out. In fact, another great call out is I'll have all this information on the Shades of Entrepreneurship newsletter. So go ahead and visit the shades of e.com. So I'll have Tomas Anhed's information. I'll have the website for Altitude Beverage. So you guys can go ahead and order that information or order those drinks. Tomas, is there anything else you would like to say before we go? No, I, I would just say that, um, you know, if you are thinking about, you know, entrepreneurship and especially in the food and beverage space, you know, please reach out. Always happy to talk. We've got a pretty cool, if you're also in Central Oregon, you know, by chance, we have a pretty cool trade organization that we just started called uh, Cultivate Bend, uh, really focused on, you know, kind of cultivating the natural products industry here. Um, we've been a big, uh, you know, uh, supporter and uh, member through that built Oregon up in Portland, yep. um, which is another phenomenal organization. So yeah, uh, obviously would love to to bring more customers to, to the altitude family, but certainly uh, for anybody that's interested in entrepreneurship, uh, more than happy to make time to, to chat um, and hopefully provide whatever advice that uh, you might find valuable. Perfect. And I would love to make sure that we stay connected. So with the Latino founders, the the pitch Latino, we want to make sure we'll find identify, you know, a Latino entrepreneur there annually in the central Oregon region to help, uh, you know, make sure that this can, it really stays a, a, a statewide um, effort, right? Because Oregon's 98,000 square miles, and there's representation throughout the entire state. So we want to make sure we, we ensure we bring them all in. So Tomas Angel, Altitude Beverage. Thank you so much again for coming on, man. This is such a great conversation. I think you provide a lot of information. Good luck, man. I think you're, you guys are killing it. I think you guys are doing a phenomenal job. I keep seeing you guys growing. So I'm excited for you guys. Um, you know, again, you're one of the winners at the Pitch Latino competition as well last year. So I'm excited to see you guys grow, man. I'm I'm very excited for you. Good luck. Continue to grow. For those listening at home, please follow the Shades of Entrepreneurship. You can visit the shades of e.com. You can also visit us on the social sites, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook at the Shades of E. Thank you and have a great night.